All right, then, hello guys. Today, we're going to be doing another Pico CTF challenge. And the challenge we're going to be doing today is going to be called A Pretty Sesame. A Pretty Sesame, which is I found a web app that claims to be impossible to hack. Try it here, and we get two hints backup files. And then, rumor has it the lead developer is a militant Emac user. So, we go try here, which opens up this log me if you can. So, if we view page source, we see that um, there's a bunch of stuff right here. So, let's try. Your page source. Okay, we see that password and login.php. So I can't really see the source code, but the hint that we get is that rumor has it this lead developer is a militant Emac user and it uses backup files. So we can look up Emac backup files. And it's basically what are the files created when Emac makes changes? So I'm assuming that you add that at the end. Yeah, it looks like you add that at the end. So if I go and add this at the end, like a tilde, we get PHP code. So what I do with this PHP code, we could like decode it ourselves and figure out how to do it. But what I'm going to do is like leverage AI. So let's see, bing.com. And then uh, decode this. PHP code. Hmm. And decode. Decode. So it says right here. So here's your PHP with the base sixty four values replaced. So. We get it's it's set post post and if these values equal to each other authentication successful. So I'm assuming if oh yeah, this just base sixty four decode this base sixty four decode. It might not be the perfect user. So that's user. So. That's user and what's this? I have no idea what is this. P password. So user and password have to be set and if user sets to this value and the password gets set to this value, if the user and the password are correct are correct and authentication is successful, and then the SHAs have to be matching of each one and it gets the content of the file and it says authentication failed. So post both have to be set, but it says right here. So it says right here, the post variable decodes to user and password. Methane, it checks for user and password inputs. If user and password matches, it echoes authentication successful. If the SHA hash matches, it reads and display the secret file TXC. Otherwise, it echoes authentication failed. So that's basically what's going on. So I understand. So. Well, what stops us from going from user and PWD as the same thing is the SHA value. So it has to be a set of data that it becomes equal to. So how do we get past this point of SHA1? So we could look up SHA1 uh, uh, breaking, breaking SHA1. And then the first thing we see is shattered, which is made by Google, where Google has said that they broke SHA1. The issue, so they found a way to, I guess, um, break SHA-1 and they have two PDF files that they did this. So the first a collision is when two different documents have the same, have the same hash fingerprint where two different documents, same hash fingerprint. So it's a way of just like collisions and they were able to break SHA-1. So we could test, uh, use the sample data that they provided so they have i'm assuming the first value and then shattered one uh, infographic one upload any file assessors we do not okay so oh yeah they have pdf1 and then that's red and then pdf2 which is blue and red and then they both equal have the same sha value so basically what we're going to be doing is uh, 
using PDF1 and PDF2 to send data into the user user data set and then the password data set and this should uh, uh, pass this value since they're two different values and we should be able to print out the secret file of txt so how do we do this great question to ask so if we go from completely from scratch if we go from right here let's see so if we go right here and then i already wrote the code but we're gonna remove the solve.py and just do it from scratch so what we're gonna do is nano solve.py so we're gonna do import request we're gonna use the request library to send web requests and import sys so what we're gonna do here is basically I don't think we even need this to be honest. So we could probably do URL is gonna equal the value that we already have, which is the challenge. What we're gonna try sending it to. So which is this one impossible login copy, and then we just add like a string attached to it. And let me check if I'm recording real quick. Cause like sometimes the mic disconnects and it's recording. So we'll just go back right here. So we got the URL set. So now what's next? We're going to do PDF one where they have it located and PDF two where they have it located. So we're just going to do that. That. So now we have each one of these. So we'll just go back to this right here and then get a value of PDF one, which is just that. And then we'll just go right here, go right here, PDF1. And then the other one, I'm assuming it's gonna be called PDF2. Now what we're gonna do is basically get the bytes for these specific values. So we're just gonna do PDF1 equals PDF1 bytes is gonna equal to the request library and i'm going to use the get content of pdf1 and we're only going to get around 500 bytes of it or we're, we're going to get as much as we can i guess we're going to get the content of it you're going to get it as data values and now for the next one we basically do the exact same thing we'll just change it up so I'll just copy this pdf2 and then right here pdf2 now once we did that we could paste basically pass in that as a data set value for the password and the uh, uh username so we're gonna do what username and we're gonna pass it the value of pdf bytes and then we're gonna pass it in the same thing as we did the other one so this is gonna be something like that. And then what password? Uh, PWD. And from here we're gonna do PDF bytes too. So that should get us from there. And then from here we're just gonna send a request. So we're gonna do res and then request dot post then we're gonna do URL and then the data is basically equal whatever we put inside here and then we're gonna print the result that we get back print dot whatever the text result is so now if we run this Python 3 solve dot pi we should get the flag which is right here pico ctf well deserve champs so if you want to understand more how this attack works you can look at it here since it's a paper by google and they make it like very easy to understand but basically the whole gist of it was just we got data from both pdf1 and pdf2 and then they even show it right here in the infograph right here 
Oh, I guess right here where they tested out the SHA sum of both of these values and that they were the same thing for SHA1. But once they tested on SHA256, which still isn't break, broken yet, it, sh it showed that there were two completely different hash values. So, yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah, that's about it for this challenge. So, now if we go right here and put this as our final solve, we should solve it. And we did. So, yeah. That's about it. Hope you guys learned something new today. I know I did. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.